How long does it take to train an untouched, undomesticated and untamed camel? Stay tuned in this episode because we're answering just that and this camel Q&A. This is the Camel Connection Podcast. Welcome to our weekly Camel Q&A. This is where you ask a camel question and we answer it. I'm Tara. And I'm Russell. And together with other camel experts, we answer your camel questions. To another camel Q and A. Hello, everyone. We are here. We have been absent, maybe for a couple of weeks now. Um, we've had some other stuff going on, and we also released some videos instead. Um, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, go check those out on YouTube. You'll love those. Um, the story of one of our camels here, because we're going to be telling more camel stories. So we're back with camel Q and A this week, and we're talking about. How long does it take to train a camel? But in this instance, we're actually talking about an untouched, undomesticated, and an untamed camel. So you're talking about one that's feral. You could say feral. I don't like that word because, like, they're beautiful. Like, something feral to me is, like, gross and, you know, that's how I grew up with that saying anyway. Right, okay. Um, if we're sounding a bit croaky, it's because we are. Um, there's the plague has hit our home, and our children have, you know, brought whatever all they or the the, all that whatever they bring home from school, they've brought home. Mm-hmm. So this question is from Louise, and Hi, Louise. she says, "Just wondering if you may, may be able to tell me, based on your experience training camels, how long would it take for bull for bulls? So basically, yeah." Bull camels mustered in from the wild, so from the arid zones in Australia, to be trained so that they they can be safely caught, led, tied, and hushed. Mm. Um, also, from there, how long would it need? What would would you need to train them to happily pack and load, or be a good riding camel? So there's a couple of levels there, mm. but we're definitely going to cover the first one here for you, Louise. You, oh, you call yourself Lou, so we'll call you Lou too. Um, you say you're keen to know what sort of time frames this could be achieved in for newly mustered bullocks um, or bulls. Bullocks are actually new to Okay, well, well, there's a process, obviously. So yes. I think we need to talk about the process more than, more than the timeline. Yeah, well, I mean, well, here's the truth. You know, I think you've heard us say this on this podcast before. It doesn't take long to initially train a camel. No. We're talking three days here. Well, uh, so there's a difference between uh, different types of camels too. I mean, you know, it all depends on their maturity level and uh, and how willing they're w- to willing to accept, I suppose, uh, the process. Yeah. Um, so there's that side of it, which so I mean, this is our favourite topic, really, because we just love, 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 love dealing with. Camels that have never been touched before. Mm. Like, it is one of our most favourite things in the world. Give us an untouched camel any day over a camel that that's gro- has grown up knowing what a human is. Oh, yeah. Um, why? Because they're easier. <laughs> well, also, you give them the opportunity to be able to show them what a human being can be like. So you have to look at yourself. Yes, and that also means that um, you're... You've got a clean slate too. Yeah, sure have. There's nothing. I think we spoke about that recently on. I can't remember which episode, but you know, you're really working with a clean slate with a camel that's had no contact with humans. Mm. So, so, so can we go through the process? Well, we can. All yes, right, because I think that would make it really clear as to where we're heading with this. All right, so you've got your motorbikes and you know, vehicles or whatever. Your mustering equipment. Mustering equipment plus um, people as well, because it does take people to drive them, obviously. Um, and and with some of the stations out in the outback, I mean, they use helicopters to initially find and, uh, and start the mustering process towards the yards. As they get closer to the yards, uh, then four-wheel drives come into play, as well as motorbikes. And uh, and and eventually they're all mustered into the yard. 
Uh, it's a mad rush towards the end. The gates are shut and the camels are in there. Mm. Okay, so that's for a lot of the camels would probably be the first time that they've ever seen such things as yards. Um, a good operator would have um, some already trained camels that are inside the yards as well, not mixing with the, um, the feral herd, but inside a separate yard within the yards. As a security. As a security and also to act as bait. Um, so that that mustering process, the camels will see these other camels and, uh, and head towards them basically as a level of comfort, really. Um, so they're all stirred up, all right? They're all, you know, mulling around, quite scared. And the best thing to do there is to leave them, all right? Go to, go to your camp overnight. Uh, make sure there's water in the yards, of course. Um, that always helps. But, uh, yeah, let them settle down. That's really important. Because the next day, then you can actually start your selection process. And you go through the selection process, and that's a podcast within itself. Um, well, I think we covered that actually on the last one. How to choose the right camel. Yeah. We did cover we that quite done. extensively in that one, actually. So you yeah. can go back and listen to that. Because, uh, you know, I mean, obviously with a herd, it all depends on what size herd, but, uh, you know, you, you want to get the, the camels that you like and the ones that you want to train. All right? And this is actually part of the problem with the industry um, in that uh, once a camel's been captured behind um, gates... In Australia. In Australia, uh, then you have to do something with them. You can't re-release them. And if, if anything, it's actually holding the industry back, those sorts of laws, but, uh, you know, it's a bit of red tape that... They're still out there. Um, so, for instance, you catch, if you if in this muster, there are 300 camels, you know, mustered into a yard, you're suddenly responsible for 300 camels. Yeah, it's <laughs> Not a, just the one or two that you might want, no, but right. 300. Exactly. And, uh, I mean, you know, something of that sort of size anyway, I mean, you know, you'd be looking at, um, you'd, you'd honestly be looking at, you know, trucks um, to, you know, do something with these camels. Um and somehow domesticate them and more, um, you know, there's other things that happen, unfortunately. Or fortunately, it depends which way you look at it. Um, but, yeah, you certainly let the camels um, rest overnight and then you start the selection process. And that might take all day just to select the, the half a dozen or whatever it is number that you're after. But just to be clear that the selection process <clears throat> isn't, like, it's it's not part of the training per se like it's a very important process because you want to select the right camel and you can find out all about how to do that in the um how to choose the right camel on on this podcast Mm. but all in all um the train you know this is the process that would normally occur and it'd be over a week even you know a couple of weeks depending on how long the muster takes too Mm. um but the the training process is when when you're you're starting to ask starting to connect with the camel and starting to ask them to do stuff and that's what we're going to discuss with you now is how long does that take and in all of our ex- our experience for instance our um our camel connection trust based camel training course used to which is level 1 used to be five or seven days you know long the course itself extensive um gives a lot of time for you know room to move and what have you and then it occurred to us that we could get that achieved in three days without justifying any of the processes um so basically what we did is we took everything compromise justifying yes compromise Compromise, thank you Without compromising anything, so basically we've 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 pinpointed the process, and then from that pinpoint, from that you know five days that would normally allow for that tra- initial training process. So we're talking about you know the 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 tying, the hushing, the leading, all that sort of stuff. We narrowed it down to this three day process, which is our foundational training, our level one, which has gone to prove time and time and time and time and time again, especially, it works especially well with untouched camels, mm. um, that, that that can be achieved in three days. It can be, that's right. Um, look, I mean, you know, in saying that as well, I mean, you know, if you chose to take five days, 
with this process, you can. That's right. Because it can be extended. Each part, each segment, if you like, of the process can be extended um, to allow more time for the camel to get to know you and you get to know the camel. Well, basically. in, in fact, if, if you are inexperienced with camels, definitely take longer. I mean, yeah. we're only saying three days because we have a systematic process and, and a foundational training that we've done so many times we could do it with our eyes closed and, you know, <laughs> you know, heads and back, heads yeah. time behind our back. We've done it so many times. We can take people through that process in three days, mm-hmm. and by the end of three days, they're like, "Holy guacamole! Did yeah. that just happen in three days?" And they they get quite yes, it does. amazed. Yeah. So basically, at the end of the three days, I mean, yes, you've got a camel that uh, is quietened down, it's come from the wild, or you know, as a feral animal. Um, and uh, has gotten used to you, is actually curious about you. Uh, you've, um, you've put a halter on, you've gone ahead and tied it to the rails, you've taught it to hush on command and to stand up on command and also um, you're at the beginning stages of being able to lead that camel effectively. So it's a pretty cool process. Really. It's an amazing process and it, it never ceases to amaze us on how... How well, well, how well the camels receive receive the, you know, our our foundational training that level one, and how quickly those those things yeah. can happen. So following that, you know, like <laughs> the more work that you do with your camel, um, obviously, you know, of uh, desensitising, pushing down, standing up, um, leading, and that sort of thing, then the more ready the camel will be for the level two, which would be more the putting on the the saddle and uh, and getting ready for you know packing or riding or whatever and even that process it's all step by step it is it uh, really is just a couple of days attached to all those different elements um a couple of days to be able to um step by step um work the camel towards um having weight on uh, whether it be um a saddle or saddle and pack and packs i should say and, and then, you know, the next process, obviously, is the writing. And, again, that is a step-by-step process. Yes. So... Um, it's, there's no, um, you know, and this is absolutely no offence to cowboys, but there's no cowboying. Like, we're not rushing the process. We're not trying to achieve... We're not putting you know, uh, our goals before the camel's welfare and things like that. Like there's always um, room for that stuff to happen. So all in all, you know, we can do level one, level two in five days with, you know, under people under our instructions, they can achieve all those things. But there is a thing where with, so, you know, part of this question was, you know, how long is it going to take to get them riding and packing? Well, that's easy to be honest. That's, you know, five days really, but what we're what we're more concerned about is people taking this literally is that okay that could happen in five days but then you need all the reinforcement training following that so if you want to for instance put your camel in a riding operation you don't just do you know do the training for five days and go "Mm, well best of luck we'll go do rides at a fair or something like that like let me tell you now that would be a very dangerous thing yeah that's a dumb idea It wouldn't happen that way. Um, and you will know that as an animal person as well. Mm. So what we're talking about as a foundational training here is easy, you know, five, seven days. I mean, if you really want to go deeper with this, um, in July 2020, we're actually planning on getting, like, mustering camels and doing this process with untouched, untamed, undomesticated camels that have probably never seen a human in their life. So that's a way for you to really experience this incredible incredible journey you can have with the camel um we'll be going through level one and level two absolutely amazing um so if that's speaking to you you can um reach out to us on our website on our events page it's all listed there um but it's so you it's the it's the it's the following up training that really counts so you may have got a saddle on you may have got a rider on but you have to keep reinforcing that. It's time and miles, you know, or time and kilometres, making sure that that camel is steady for whatever you want to achieve in the future. That's it. Look, I liken it to, you know, the, the courses that people do nowadays. I was surprised um, we had a, a lady uh, came over to our house. Uh, she was uh, to look after the kids for a few days. And she was studying teaching. Now, I did that uh, many years ago in another lifetime. And, uh, and of course, it was a four-year course uh, for me, and uh, it was face-to-face at university. 
and, uh, and of course I had to go to the lectures and I had to go to the tutorials and sit in the classroom. Be present. Mm. And be present. But uh, she was saying that uh, now most of it's online mm. and uh, and then they have just a couple of practi practicals and, uh, and then out into the classroom, which mm. um, was a bit surprising. But anyway, but... What what my point being is that uh, yeah she she now gets the foundation studies, uh, if you like, or the foundation of becoming a teacher, um, you know, in three four years. But the real learning is when you're actually doing it. Absolutely. And that's and that was actually the case, uh, you know, thirty odd years ago for myself as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and you so can theorize you, all you like, but you can have these foundations and that's. A, great i mean that's what it's all about is to actually have the tools in your toolkit um but then you have to put it into practice yes. and it's the more practice that you get and the better you become and it's like that like i was saying about the teaching you know the more years of actual face-to-face -face in the classroom teaching you do the better the teacher you become mm -hmm. and it's the same with uh, any sort of animal ha handling you know, you can have your toolkit that you get, you know, three, three days to level one, a couple more days to level five, a uh, level two, I should say, and, uh, and, and, but then the real work starts. Yes. All right, so, yeah. It, it's a build, build it's upon. A building it it's on. a foundational. That's it. Which means, like, it's like building a house. If the foundation's not put in place properly in the first place, everything that build, builds on top of that is going to be somewhat a bit wobbly, a bit crumbly, like a bit iffy, like, you know, I don't know if this is working, but we'll try it. And then all these things start changing in your camel training and handling skills and then the camel gets confused and then, you know, you're back at square one again. Um, so... Look, if you guys want to go further with this, I mean, you know, we love this is our favourite subject, well, that's obviously. Well, set up the business was to be able to provide, especially the people that are wanting to get camels and become involved with camels, uh, to set their foundations solidly. Mm -hmm. The rest of the work's up to them, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know. And of course, you know, we have got you know these podcasts. We've got you know all sorts of information that can help along the way. But basically, saying that uh, you need to get face to face. Absolutely. And get out there and actually do the face-to-face -face classroom work with your student being the camel. And, um, yeah, and that's for you and your camel. And if you do want to take this journey further with uh, the Camel Connection Trust-Based Camel Training, if you resonate with our message, we've got a couple of uh, options. Russell's already mentioned one. You can come to our in-person courses. We've got level one, level two. Um, or you can – and or you can do it online. So – you know, you've you've got all the. These are our tools that we're offering you. You know, this is what's available to you. And you know, a very small percentage of people will only do it. Will only actually go through with their plan. Will only go through with their goal. I mean, it, you know, it's like setting goals at New Year's, right? How many people just you know, on second of January, just like oh, well, giving up that. You <laughs> know, that was a good idea at the time. So you know, if you're super keen to get started. You ought to jump on our wait list for our next virtual camel school, um, which is the online training. Um, I believe in oh, February, March 2020, we're going to do another four, four, eight, five week program. Um, very, very, uh, how do you say, in depth with this camel training stuff. So you get this, the foundational training 100%. And of course, there's the in person training too. Um, the online course comes with that. Do whatever you feel is right in this moment. Um, jump on the wait list or, you know, look at our events page. Have a look if the in-person course is for you because we're here for you. We're here to set you up, as Russell said, for the best foundational training that yeah. you can possibly ever experience in your life. And we're not just saying that because we're saying that we're saying that because of other people have said that to us that well i mean at the end of the day i mean you know this is what it's all about is that uh the, there is information out there about uh, training camels but you know not a lot <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit here and a little bit there and it can all, often be conflicting and confusing and all that sort of stuff and this is why i wanted to set up something that was solid for that foundational training because uh, that is what i found was what worked for me uh, uh, everything beforehand, you know, it, uh, I was just getting more confused. The camels had no idea what I, I was doing until I had foundational training of sorts. 
okay? And this is, you know, we've developed it since then, of course, um, even further. You know, there's always tricks and techniques that, you know, you can always learn from other cultures in particular. Um, and we've done that with our overseas journeys that we've done uh, in the business. But uh, yeah, we needed to show or to um, to have available um, for people so that they didn't have to go through the rubbish that I did. Mm. You know, that, that was so hard. And, uh, and so here it is. I mean, this question: How long does it take to train a camel? You could go out into the world and and ask uh, several different people, and some will have no idea, and others might tell you different stories. But this is how we do it. We're saying in five days you can have a camel, you know, with that foundational train with the foundational training, and then everything can be built on from that. So it is an absolute pleasure to be here to serving you guys and giving you this information. Lou, thank you so much for your question because I know you're not the only one with this question. Um, so yeah, I we know that um, this will go far and wide. We get it a lot. What? Oh, this type of question. Oh, yeah, a lot of camel questions. I mean, yeah. Google's not really helpful when it comes to camel questions. Mm. So, mm. yeah. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in again, and we'll catch you on another episode. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Bye. Right, see you. Bye. If you like this information we've just shared with you, you'll be sure to love the free camel ebooks and training videos that we're giving away. We're giving away two camel ebooks. Introduction to Camels and Introduction to Camel Training. Plus, in our bonus camel training videos, we take you through training and handling camels built on connection and trust. And we also share how to understand a camel's way of thinking. This is gold information that you don't want to miss. So be sure to sign up now to get your free ebooks and training videos over at camelconnection.com.